Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel for this week's Toolbox Safety Topic video. Before we get started, make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below here to encourage me to make more videos of this type. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will find additional videos of this nature along with other safety related videos and leadership training videos. Well, this past series we've been talking about noise and I'd like to finish it up with just a final note this week about how to recognize when something's too loud or whether your job is too loud and some of the things that you can use to protect that hearing, your hearing I should say. But well, let's go ahead and get started with the video. Now noise is unwanted sound that can affect job performance, safety, and your health. Psychological effects of noise include annoyance and disruption of concentration. Physical effects include loss of hearing, pain, nausea, and interference with communications when the exposure is severe. Noise levels are measured in decibels. Normal conversation ranges between 60 and 65 decibels. Decibels are measured on a scale like one for earthquakes. So as the decibel increase only slightly, the noise increase dramatically. 73 decibels is twice as loud as 70 decibels. OSHA has standards that say how long you can be exposed to a particular noise level before hearing protection is required. And that starts about 85 dB and the type of protection increases as that noise goes up. Hearing protection is essential when noise exposures can't be controlled at their source or sufficient distancing cannot be achieved between you and the source. Both earplugs and earmuffs provide a physical barrier that reduces noise levels at the inner ear and prevent hearing loss from occurring. However, people often resist wearing these or they use them incorrectly. Employees resist wearing hearing protection more than any other type of personal protective equipment. One reason is they don't think they really need it. But hearing loss occurs so gradually, even in intense exposures, that by the time you notice it, irreversible damage has already occurred. Another reason for not wearing hearing protection is that it can feel uncomfortable. Sometimes workers spring the muffs so they don't seal properly against the head or snip off the inner portion of earplugs leaving only the outer end to fool their supervisor. Now if you feel the need to do this, see your supervisor about obtaining a different type of or style that fits you correctly and comfortably. Slight initial discomfort may be experienced when a good seal between the surface of the skin and the surface of the ear protection is made. The amount of protection you obtain depends on obtaining a good seal and even a small leak can substantially reduce the effectiveness of the protector. Remember to check the seal several times a day. Protectors, especially earplugs, have a tendency to work loose as a result of talking or chewing and must be resealed occasionally. Properly designed fitted and clean ear protectors will cause no more discomfort to most workers than wearing a pair of safety glasses. Your earplugs are made of soft materials such as neoprene to prevent injury to the ear canal. Skin irritations, injured eardrums, and other adverse reactions from using earplugs are very rare if they are kept reasonably clean. Some of the signs that you should be wearing hearing protection include 
if you have to rate if you have to raise your voice for someone three feet away to hear you the sight is too noisy and you need hearing protection you need hearing protection also if you're operating on or near noisy equipment also if you have a roaring or ringing noise in your ear at the end of the workday, you are probably being exposed to too much noise. Also, if speech or music sounds muffled to you after you leave work, but it sounds fairly clear in the morning when you return to work, you are being exposed to noise levels that are causing a temporary hearing loss. In time, this can become permanent if you do not take care. All right, boys and girls, remember that your hearing is something that you only get one shot at, like your eyes. And hearing is a chronic condition. Hearing loss is a chronic condition. It occurs over time. So you may not recognize hearing loss right off the bat until you get into your later years. In other videos, we talked about some other aspects of hearing loss, like how loud are tools, um, how the ear is designed. Check these videos out. I've, I've posted them uh, here on the video. So check those out. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below here to encourage me to make more videos of this type. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will find additional videos of this nature, other safety related videos, and leadership training videos. And until we see each other again, take care of yourself because you're number one. Look out for your coworkers and help ensure their safety. Have a grateful day, and remember, I will. See you in the field. All right, all right. Well, if you're still watching this video, I was flipping through the internet and I saw some jokes that I thought they're for kids so nobody get offended about turkeys so why did the turkey cross the road twice to prove he wasn't a chicken what do you name a turkey on the day after thanksgiving why you name him lucky now when do you serve rubber turkey on Pranksgiving. And why did they let the turkey join the band? Because he had the drumsticks. What did the mother turkey say to our disobedient children? If your father could see you now, he'd be turning over in his gravy. What did the little turkey say to the big turkey? Peck on someone your own size. Why do turkeys make bad baseball players? It's because they only hit foul balls. This is my favorite. Which side of the turkey has the most feathers? I'll leave that to the end. Let you think about it. What sound does a limping turkey make? Wobble, wobble. What sound does a space turkey make? Hubble, hubble. What's a turkey's favorite dessert? Peach gobbler. What sound does a turkey's phone make? Wing, wing. What did the turkey dress up for as Halloween? A goblin. What do you call an over-caffeinated turkey? A perky. What do turkeys like to do on sunny days? Well, they have pet necks. What do you get when you cross a turkey with a banjo? A turkey that can pluck itself. Why did the police arrest the turkey? They suspected it of foul play. 
What happened when the turkey got into a fight? Why, he had the stuffing knocked out of him. What do you get when you cross a turkey with a ghost? A poultry geist. Why can't you take turkey to church? Because they use foul language. And what do you call a rude turkey? You, know, you call him a jerky. How many cooks does it take to stuff a turkey? One, but you really have to squeeze him in. Is turkey soup good for you? Not if you're the turkey. If fruit comes from a tree, where does turkey come from? From a poultry. Uh -huh. What do you call it when it rains turkeys? What you call that foul weather? And the answer to the one of which side of the turkey has the most feathers? Why, it's the outside of the turkey. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope you watched this, and I hope you found some entertainment in it. And you, you remember, I encourage you to have a grateful day. But this week, I encourage you to have a thankful week. Thanks for watching. Well, I'm going to call that an Easter egg just to see if anybody watches these things. Let's go stop recording.